All right, guys, in this problem, it says, given this ellipse over here, we're going to find the following, the center, the ABCs, and so on, and then we're going to graph it. So let's try it here. Okay, first off, this is already in standard form because we notice that the denominator underneath the x's is larger than the denominator underneath the y's. Whichever denominator is larger comes first. That's standard form. If the y's are larger, they'll flip-flop, right? Okay, but the x's are larger, so it's like this. So right away, we can find our center. It's going to be at negative 3, 1. So negative 3, 1. I'm going to put a dot there. I'm going to graph this as I go. Our a is the square root of our first denominator, which is 10. Our b is the square root of the second denominator, which is 6. And then our c is going to be, the uh, we use the equation a squared minus b squared equals c squared. Where here, this is going to be 100 minus our b squared was 36 equals c squared. 100 minus 36 is 64. And of course, the square root of 64 is 8. Okay, so 8 is my c. That's going to be important later when we find our foci. Okay, now uh, let's see what else this tells us. First off, our major axis vertices. So our major axis, since it's x that has a larger denominator, we're going to be longer, right, than we are tall, or fatter than we are tall. So in this case, I have to go 10 spots in both directions from my center. So if I go 10 this way, that's going to put me at negative 13. Let's see. We already found C, so I might just erase that. So I have some room here. Working on a little bit of a smaller board. A little bit gross. Okay. Anyway, uh, this is at the point, what did I say, negative 13, 1. Okay, and if I go 10 spots in the other direction, let's see, we would have 5 and 10. This would be at the point 7, 1. Okay, so my major axis vertices are negative 13, 1 and uh, 7, 1. Okay, for my minor axis vertices, we'll get to our major axis here in a second, but for my minor axis vertices, I have to go up 6 and down 6 in each direction from my center. So if I add 6 here, now all of a sudden I'm at the point uh, negative 3, 6. And if I go down uh, down 6 spots, that's going to be negative 3, negative 5. Negative 3, negative 5. So then I would have enough you know, to make that ellipse shape. That none of us are good at making, right? It's kind of a hard shape to draw. So it would look like that. Um, we said, let's see, this one is my, my, um, my minor axis vertices are negative 3, 6. And the other one was negative 3, negative 5. So a couple other things that we need here is we need the major axis. Well, again, that'd be like if I connected a dotted line that goes through the long side. Um, here, this is going to be the line y equals 1, right? Everything, all these dots are on the line y equals 1. And same thing for my, my minor um, axis. If I draw a dotted line the other way, everything on that is on the line x equals negative 3. It's the only other thing I don't have here are my foci. And my foci are going to be points on my major axes. And the reason I waited to do this is because... So normally, or sometimes, I guess, we have our C term that's a square root. In this case, it was an integer, right? Because I think we said 100 minus 60, or minus uh, 36 gave us 64. The square root of that was 8. So because of that, I can just go 8 in each direction from my center and plot those points. If I go 8 this way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That puts me at, what is that, uh, negative 11, 1. So negative 11, 1 is one of the foci, and the other one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right here, and that's 5, 1, the point 5, 1. Okay, and those finish out everything we need to know about this given ellipse.